Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Place Bacterio Space Exploration. You join me in the middle of a crisis. As you can tell by the, um, yeah, all the alerts that are going off and that rather large number in the red square, ah, train, um, the rather large number in the, in the red triangle at the bottom of the screen, uh, one of my outposts is currently under attack, so the biters have managed to squeeze, them, if I can squeeze in there, the biters have managed to squeeze their way in through the, um, past the defences and are now ripping up the middle of the uh, one of these mines like that. So I've come running down here as fast as I can and I'm going to, well, fortunately it's not too, there's not too many of them and it was just spitters. Now spitters do a lot more damage than biters but they're a lot weaker so they're easier to take out. As you can see I've now, now taken them all out and I can use my um, my bots to re, uh, to sort of, to, to fix all the damage they've done. Um, and then also get rid of these ones down here. There we go. And now, yeah, so there's quite a lot of damage done there. I'm, as you can see, I'm obviously uh, repairing it all now, putting in putting in new miners to replace the ones that were destroyed, new bits of bells and so on. And I also need to repair up the station where that was damaged as well. So there's a lot of a lot of the chests and things were taken out. And of course, the the reason they managed to get in was because some of the gun turrets around the bottom had been destroyed. Because well, basically, I hadn't put enough of them in. I'd left some fairly big gaps, sort of assuming it would probably be okay. Um, because when I built it, the biters were significantly less evolved, so the attacks that were coming in involved probably fewer biters and certainly fewer tough biters. So I'll come up here and repair these ones as well. Um, it looks like the um, this outpost had also run out of turrets, so it presumably through having endless biters thrown at it, there'd been enough attrition to just finally wear them all out. The other problem is, as you can see here, my um, roboports don't actually cover the entire um, the entire outpost there's a few the, the, the uh, top right and bottom left corners aren't covered because this was one I built before I started making the um, sort of exactly one roboport outpost thing so this one's a little bit too big which is why it doesn't fit so I'm coming in here I'm going to I'm going to sort of repair this manually and then put in some more of the um, yeah pa paste in some more turrets along the edge here where they where they broke in so make sure that doesn't happen again and putting the construction train down as well so I've got a bit more um, a bit more in the way of supplies. And of course I need to fiddle with the um, the conditions here to make sure it actually stops and waits when it gets down here to the bottom, otherwise it'll turn up, wait five seconds, then shoot off again and go back up to the top station. Uh, which is absolutely no use whatsoever to anyone. Pick the car up so that it doesn't get run over by the train on the way in. And then I've actually run out of the um, filter insert, sorry, the, the green inserters, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so Because that means I can't replace all, repair all of the uh, these ones that have got damaged. But I'm going to go, just go in and replace them all with uh, the white inserters uh, because I mean they're they're just as good, they they they're just as fast rather, and they can also they also allow you to filter. So I can make sure that if for some reason any anything other than coal does get into these um, into these chests, it won't get accidentally loaded into the uh, into the train when it comes to pick it up. And I'll upgrade the chests to steel ones as well. I mean you know, I might as well when there's any any time there's lower um, demand on on the coal, then we can have it uh, just making sure a bit more is collected and, uh, and stocked up for, uh, for future future needs. My uh, train is getting rather full of all the junk I'm picking up as I do this. I, sh I, need to, I need to find somewhere to go to unload all of this junk and just get rid of it and uh, get it out of my inventory so it goes somewhere else. Um, looks like this um, outpost might, be, might have run out of uh, repair packs as well. That's uh, a bit awkward. And over here are all the ones that were destroyed earlier, um, because this, this corner is outside the uh, catchment area of the uh, rover ports as well. So we'll fix all of this up while I'm here. So what I'm going to do to make sure this sort of problem doesn't happen again is I'm going to put in some more ro some more rover ports in the uh, in inside this base, like that, and then another one down at the bottom, like that. And that now means I've got full coverage. The, the whole of the um, the, bay, the uh, outpost is now covered by the robo ports, which should mean that the uh, that any anything that gets damaged or destroyed will be repaired. I'm also going to pick up some of these um, old miners, the ones with the red lights on on them, because uh, that means they've managed they've dug up all of the resources that's available underneath them. So there's no point in having them there anymore. They're not they're not going to get anything else. And potentially I could then go and use these miners somewhere else. Uh, it just saves on on resources, saves me having to make quite as many new miners. And also, it's, it's a way of keeping an eye on how much of the uh, the patch has been used up. There's still quite a lot of coal here, but the fact that it doesn't have as much... Um, that I can't fit quite as many miners onto the patch means I'm going to be pulling it out a bit more slowly, which is why the belts aren't quite as full as they were earlier. 
Um, and that, but that can still be fed over to the uh, stations, and yeah, the trains will keep coming in and picking up the coal as it, get, as it gets produced. And now we've got, yeah, well, most of them are um, are inserting. There's a some of the ones up at the top, um, at the, sorry, at the top of each wagon rather, haven't got haven't actually got any resources to put in, which is a bit of a shame. But that's down to the way I've um, I've laid the belts out. And there's not, I don't know. I mean, I could do a bit about it, I'd, I'd, but it would take up a lot more space. I'd need a lot more insert, uh, a lot more splitters to to make sure all of the chests got filled up. And I don't think it really matters. So what I was doing just then is I was putting some more um, of the various supplies that are used by the by the outpost, so the turrets, the insert, the burner inserters, and the repair packs into the into the chest on this particular outpost to allow it to then start gathering up everything it needs. Right now that's all fixed up, time to head back off and have a look, have another look at um well whatever the next stage is around the uh, around the base. <laughs> Wow, there's a lot of bots flying around restocking everything here. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to, uh, that I've been getting on with, there's actually been a bit of a time skip here since I recorded the last bit of video. Um, I don't know how subtle that transition was, whether when, and whether anyone noticed. <laughs> so what I've been doing is, as you as you remember from the last episode, I had this area over here that was building up all of the um, doohickey, uh, all of the basically building up on the uranium. Um, this seems to have now got stuck. I need to have something in here that's going to go come in and pull out the excess of, of whatever really, and just make sure this keeps going. But at the moment, I've got oh no, I've used up all I've used up all the um, heavy uranium. Okay, so what I've done here, I've built up a, a system of assembly machines that are producing depleted uranium ammunition, and what that's doing is it's taking the the red ammo that's coming from this. Um, outpost here so there's an ammo drop train ammo drop station here that's, that's unloading coal and uh, piercing ammunition from the, that's coming from the main base it goes all the way around this belt down here across here uh, up here and then into this one where it, I'm splitting them out converting the red ammo into green ammo the depleted uranium that does so much more damage it's amazing um, and then that in theory at least goes up this long belt here uh, where it's feeding into the top defenses of this base at the outpost but then it's going up up this long belt here all the way to the north boundary of my base and I've got a splitter and from here I'm feeding it out both ways and I've built up this huge wall all the way across the top of my base going from well technically from here on the edge of this all the way over to here on the other side of this lake and I've even got a, um, a bridge going across here to carry carrying the ammunition so we've now got um, this belt feeding feeding all the turrets all the way across here and it's because I got I got fed up of all these little attacks happening on all of my um, outposts and them just getting needled and little occasional turrets getting blown up and so on and I thought right I want to upgrade to the the good ammunition stop using the piercing because it's yeah it was great for a while but now the biters have upgraded I need to upgrade as well so I've switched over to the green ammunition which we can see on this on this belt here and this does significantly more damage. Let's have a quick look. So the the yellow ammunition, as you can see here, does eight damage, of which three is physical. Five plus three physical. The red one does 12.8 damage. Uh, the green does 30 38.4. So that's enormously more powerful. It's like three times three times the power of the of the red, and like almost five times as powerful as, as the yellow so this is much much more effective it, it could absolutely rip through the normal types of biters we are picking up some damage up here actually that's interesting I'm gonna I think I might need to put in some more turrets up at this bit, bit although I noticed that these are using red ammunition still because there was there was a bit of red ammo on this belt before I started upgrading so there'll, there'll be some point along here somewhere it's quite a long way along actually here where the um, the red ammunition ran out and we started upgrading to the green and the reason I need this is because the bite, as I say, the biters have been upgrading as well. Let's see if I can find any of the um, examples of the scary ones. Here we go. So there aren't there aren't any of the small ones visible here, but okay, these these are the um, these are the yes, yeah, so we've got the blue ones are big biters, and as you can see, they've got what several that's they've got 375 health whereas these big ones the behemoths the green ones with 3000 that's almost 10 times as much so it's, it, it takes a lot of ammunition to bring one of those down it's a lot of shooting um i want to find one of the, the basic very basic ones to compare it to this is the this is a medium and that's down at um where's the health i can't find it 75 and then 
50 for the medium spitters. Oh, here's, here's, here's a mini small spitter. That one's only got a health of 10. So you can see that the, the, um, the big green biters literally have 300 times the health of these guys. And that's why they take quite so much killing. And I found down here particularly, this base was having a bad time. Bad time of it. Um, what was happening was you get the flood of biters would come in, biters and spitters. The biters would end up pressed up against the wall. And if there's a green one or two in there, and especially if we're still using the red ammunition, <clears throat> then that biter would be then that biter would just absorb all of the all the shot shots, leaving the spitters behind them just pummeling uh, like artillery, pummeling the uh, the turrets, and the turrets would get destroyed and yeah, all, all went badly wrong. So that's why there's now quite so many of them along here. I just wanted to make sure this uh, this this uh, outpost was protected. And then along here as well, we've got the um, same sort of thing with the uh, regular regular turrets and a nice long wall. Until at least, at least until this point where I ran out of walls. So we've got three sides of the, uh, of the of the whole area now protected. So it runs all the way along the top, down the side here. There's a bit of sort of wending through these relatively safe areas, using the using the using the lakes as part of the wall as well, just to bring up the sort of efficiency a bit, I guess. And then down here this area. I'm not 100% happy with this bit, partly because it's too close to these um, these biter nests here, as you can tell by the fact that these um, these worms are all a bit a bit excited, a bit too pleased to see me, and all of these walls are damaged as well. That's not ideal. Um, it's a bit it's a bit too close, um, and also it's a um, it's an external corner, and I don't like having those because it means the, bite, the biters can sort of get in at a, from an at a funny angle, and the, the turrets can't protect each other quite as effectively. Which is why there's more of them here. But even so, if you get the spitters at sort of maximum range, then they can they can you can you can get to a point where there's only one or two turrets that can actually shoot them. So with this, we've got the ammunition, as I said, being brought all the way round. Uh, around the edge, and using using the lakes as where I can as walls because it just it, they're they're completely impenetrable. The biters can never get through them, it, it, and it just adds that little bit those little bits in and makes them slightly slightly easier. I can then uh, I've got my wall going all the way around here, down effectively across here. Although as you can see the the belt goes round the top here, and then along the bottom of here, along the edge of here. So there's an, there's another external corner here, which again isn't ideal, but in order to to not have that, I'd have had to build this wall all the way across here. And there's a lot of biters around here, which is a bit difficult. Um, and then <clears throat> I'd have had to decide what to do over here, which might have meant building a wall up from here to this lake, and then maybe another one across there. So it'd been an enormously bigger area. And as we've seen, I've run out of the um, run out of uranium already for building that up. Um, oh yeah, I was saying about the um, the reason the reason these nests are still here is because I don't have any railway lines that are um, actually close enough to them to bring the to bring the artillery train out. I could put it probably, now that I've got the wall set up like this, I could probably put, bring the artillery train to here and at least get rid of that one and some of these ones. But as it was before, I was basically limited to bring it into this up, up here and here because you need, the artillery train needs to be protected because that's where all the biters will make a beeline for when you blow up their nests. So if I'd parked it here before I built this wall and blown these up, then they'd have come charging around here and eaten the train and I, I, I don't want that. The other thing I've done with the wall is I've put in power all the way around it. That's not not for the inserters because I'm still using burner inserters on all of these, just because it seems it seems easier and more reliable and just, just one less thing to worry about. And technically, it uses slightly less power. Um, but then I've also but I've got that in for the radar. So there is, as you can see from this, there is a ra radar coverage basically all the way from here, round the edge of the loop. I seem to have missed a tiny bit of it there, but never mind. All the way round up to here. Another thing I've done, speaking of power. Is I've started to link things up. I think I've decided I've had it, had enough now of the um, of the outposting system. It was interesting to try, but I don't think it's as good as just linking everything together. So what I've done now is I've got all of the there is now everything pretty much is on the same power network except oh except these these bits along here they are um, running off just running off the, uh, the the solar panels here. I should probably join that on with a little bit across there or across here or something like that. <clears throat> And that's quite nice because it means I've got much more capacity for storing power and generating power. So if we look at this, my accumulator charge is still at um, mostly mostly full, and it's quite close to the end of the night. So we're we're e easily producing enough power here um, to keep everything running. You see how how brief this this high spike was here before it went back to this this low level. That's the amount of time it took to charge all of the accumulators up, basically 
that much. That triangle there is the power that was needed to be put back into the accumulators before it went back to just sort of normal level. And then there's this little bump here as the accumulators kick in overnight. So, so the, the electricity now because it because it's using the whole whole grid in one, as one system, there's a lot more um, capacity to smooth out any bumps and in, 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 in the uh, in the power gener in the power consumption. Just make sure everything keeps working. But the main reason I've linked it all up like this is because my next plan is to build a nuclear power plant in probably about up here somewhere where it's reasonably close to the water and I can sort of fit it in. I might start, I don't know, I'm trying to think how, how, how I usually end up building them. Uh, maybe start here and just work out this way. Um, so that, that that's something that also is going to use the uranium, but that's going to use the light green, the 235, the good stuff. And so I think that should... Um, yeah, that should solve all of my power problems. I can then start bringing online the, um, the these big things that I was talking about in the last episode that are going to use a lot more a lot more power, and just yeah, just keep everything uh, ticking over, and that should boost my um, resource input. So that my next my next task, I think, once I've got the nuclear power up, is then going to be getting the output from this core mining drill sorted and pulverized and dealt with from there. So we shall see how that goes. Um, that's going to be probably the next two episodes. I guess at this point I could go around and I could remove all of these walls and turrets and things. I probably won't, I'll just leave them there because why not? I might go around and collect all of the um all of the red ammo from all of these all of these stations where it's not needed anymore though, because it's it's a bit of a waste of resources just having it sitting there. And I could just flip flip the um inserters around to collect it. So, oh, and I need to finish off this wall and and wipe out all the biters who are, that are going to be inside it. Because, as you can see, I've I've cleared the area, cleared the inside out over here. So there's it's now pretty much safe on the inside, except for uh, there are a few worms and things that I've missed because I didn't just they, they well yeah I, when I was pull, shooting the artillery around I just I, I must have just missed them because uh, then they're not so obvious when you're zoomed out as the as the nests are. So I need to yeah come across here. I think I'll probably just straight line across here and then keep going around the edge of this um, oil mine. Um, exactly what I'm going to do here I, I don't really know. Maybe I'll build a, a wall straight from about here up to about here then I can use this lake and I need to investigate what the, the what the, the ground underneath here is doing so I know where, where what to do with the with the um, with the wall. Hopefully this lake here will come down quite a long way and I'll be able to just use that as defences and clear out the whole area. But I'm not too optimistic about that because you can see this is this is um, this isn't a promontory sticking out. Uh, you can see bits of edge of edge of lake here and um, the end definitely the end of the lake here. So it depends on what this one does, how big this one is. But we'll 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 find out. Well I'll um I'll come over here again with the artillery and wipe out some of this area. Maybe after I've built this we'll see. I haven't decided yet. But that's all for a future episode. I hope you'll join me for that. And um, I think this is going to give me a bit more room to expand in here. I'll see what else I need. But I I, I just want to get on to, on to thinking about the rocket now. I think I've, I've, um, I've, I've been yak shaving far too much. I need to just get down and start actually building the rockets and, uh, and start doing the space part of the space exploration. But that's definitely to come. Uh, I hope you'll join me for that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.